Hey guys, it's Car Guy 11. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to another Car Guy 11 live where we talk about the most exciting car stories of the week and I missed you guys the most exciting last week car stories of the week and I missed you guys the most um last week I was at a track day so I could not have the live but um actually that is the big topic for tonight I want to um discuss going to the track with the Corvette um C7, uh, some of the uh, different uh, challenges and uh, how it performs and things like that. And hopefully some of you guys also take yours to the track. Um, I'd be interested to hearing um, if you do and, and how you perform. But uh, before we get into all that, uh, let's just review some of the last videos and as we're waiting for people to get on definitely uh say hi but um let's see the last live i had was talking about the supra so uh i had several videos in between there uh the last uh the the first one is the the porsche 911 speedster which i saw in new york uh the last edition of the 991.2911 special edition. Uh, pretty cool car, basically a roadster version of, of the 911. But in this video, I also uh, do an overview of the new 911, the 992. Uh, so that's uh, pretty interesting to compare the old versus new. Um, not a lot of people watch this for some reason. I thought Porsches would be uh, pretty interesting to you guys, especially as it's a competitor to the uh, Corvettes, or they always compare them to them at least. But uh, yeah, definitely take a look at that video if you haven't seen it. Uh, and then last Wednesday, I posted the two Mercedes AMG 35s. And basically, these are mid level AMG models in between the base and the amg 45s so this is about a 300 horsepower range and um pretty cool though they should be more reasonably priced and there's a they're both sedans but one's a coupe like and one is more uh traditional sedan so take a look at that one and then of course my last video from this past saturday was the track that I did last last Wednesday, and um, haven't been on the track this, since last year. This is the first first one of the season for me, and was using the new Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires I got last summer before my road trip. I did I did have a track day in them last year and. Of course, I went to NCM Motorsports Park and used them um, last year as well. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting to see all that rubber that deposited on the tires from the track. And uh, yeah, so definitely watch that video if you haven't. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, footage. And uh, again, to see that blistering of the tire it looks like but it's actually just uh picking up uh, rubber from the track so but anyway um yeah so the first thing i did want to discuss is is tracking your c7 and this the change i did uh go into the 4s tires um actually turned out to be a uh, performance hindrance on track. Uh, they are great tires though for on road and every day. Uh, they perform well in the rain and weather conditions. They, um, they're fairly quiet. They're a little smoother because they're non run flats. And uh, they're holding up well with the miles. I have 
over 10,000 miles on them, did the cross country trip last year with them. And, um, they're still over 50% tread. So one thing I could say is they're holding up very, very well. They are um, better in stock in that regard. The only thing they are lacking is the on-track grip. Now, I think there's a couple things happening here. The stock, stock, Michelin Pilot Super Sports, which is a special Corvette OEM compound uh, developed with Michelin and Corvette, um, they are stickier altogether. It's a little bit different configuration of rubber. But I think a bigger part of it is the run flat tires actually are helping performance because of the stiffer sidewall. And it's just the more immediate response. And um, and they just have a little more grip and um and a response like i said um now these do ride a little better without the run flats and of course they're a little bit lighter as well not not being run flats but but there's there's some performance uh advantage you get using the run flats actually so which is different from the c6 generation where everyone wanted to get rid of the run flats and those were the goodyear tires at that time so um yeah so it's pretty interesting i i last year i ran them and i got slower times i blamed it on the weather because it was like 90 degrees when i was uh at the track last summer and i thought the cooler temperatures would help things not get as greasy and um, the tires won't overheat as much. But it seems that it was in the mid to high 70s and it seems that uh, I got the same time. So unfortunately, um, it didn't help. Or maybe fortunately, because they're they're pretty consistent in, uh, in two different temperatures. So, um, but overall, I am really happy with them and I recommend them. Uh, it's just you're not getting as good of track performance as you are with the um, OEM tires. One thing, though, they are a little more, um, they're not as expensive, expensive as the OEMs. So there, there is a cost savings there, too. And let me just show the uh, tire rack what they offer for my car, which is a Z51 Stingray. So it has the 245, uh, 35 19s in front and 285 30s, 20s in the rear. So these are what I got, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's at $1,200, 1269 uh, But there's not too many choices. Now they have the regular old Michelin Pilot Super Sports, these are the non front flats, um, not a Corvette compound. In fact, these say BMW. Um, $1,269, but they're about the same price. So I actually probably wouldn't get those. Uh, if you're going to get that, you might as well get the uh, OEM ones. Continental has some. I never tried these. Let me know if any of you guys tried the Continental Extreme Contact Sports. These are um, these are a little cheaper. Yeah, there's not a total there for some reason. Uh, and then these, of course, are the OEM original equipment tires. These are a little bit more expensive here. See, sixteen hundred dollars. Um, but again, great tires um and i for me i probably if i had to switch again if i have to get new tires i think i would go back to these just because i do track the car and like that extra performance now i was thinking about the cup twos but they're actually not available for this tire size at least not in the corvette um configuration um Bridgestones has his SO4s. 
These are a little cheaper than the Michelins. Again, I'm not too familiar with these. And then uh, hand-cooked Venus V12 EVO2s. A little bit more cheaper, again. I And tell me, guys, if you've heard anybody use any of these. Uh, and then the Sumita, again, getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. I'm, I'm assuming that. Uh, these are not going to perform very well. HTR Z3s and then the Pirelli's P0s. And then the Continental Conti Sport Contact 5Ps. Um, Continentals are decent tires, so um, I'm not sure about those. And then we get to Eagle. The Goodyear's I've heard have, have improved a lot. In recent years, the F1 asymmetric three run flats. These are run flats, and they are thirteen hundred dollars. So a little bit more than the four S's. It might be um, worth investigating. Two forty tread wear on those, and then the Yokohama's Avonsport V one one hundred fives. So, um, again, not a ton of choices, but um, I don't know. One thing I do like about the Michelins, uh, they do have a tread life warranty, 15,000 miles, because they are different size front to rear. But, um, again, with tracking it, um, um, you know, you might get – end up getting some warranty if they're wearing fairly e evenly but usually that's about what you get 15,000 miles but on my for rest is I since I did the cross country trip um I have over 10,000 miles I'm going to get um probably way more because again all that highway driving so so anyway um again comment any uh questions you have about track driving or what you're using uh below um i don't think too many are on right now so uh if you're watching this on playback and you can always uh watch it back on podcast apple podcast and um of course on youtube after the fact so let me uh get into some of the news stories this week and just today, actually, a new Ferrari was released, and it's a it's a hybrid. So S SF90 Stradale plug-in hybrid. It's their first plug-in hybrid. Uh, it it actually can do 16 miles of electric driving, and the funny part is. When it's an electric only, it's a front wheel drive vehicle. <laughs> so it's just the front wheels with electric motors. And also that is the reverse gear. There's no there's no mechanical reverse. It's it's the electric motors that actually do the reversing. Uh, looks pretty decent in the photos. And um, you know, it's a mid-engine car. It looks uh, looks more modern than the um, the 488 uh, for sure, in my opinion. Uh, I do I do like the looks of it. Um, again, it's 986 86 horsepower combined with the electric motor and the gas, which is a V8. Uh, do they break down the Power of the V8. Um, I don't see it here. But uh, one thing about um, about this car that we should talk about is the C8 Corvette. Um, okay, here is the V8. 3.9 liter V8 generates 769 horsepower. And 590 pound feet of torque. But um, 
a couple comments here. Hey, Apple Jacks, thanks for joining us tonight. The Goodyear F1 EMTs on my C5 outperform the Goodyear F1 Super Sport EMTs on my 2013 Grand Sport. Okay, yeah, I I heard um, people really not liking the uh, Goodyear run flats on the uh, prior generation Corvettes, and uh, that was one thing the C7 brought was Michelin tires. So, um, yeah, so Michelin tires have been great with the C7. I don't have a lot of experience with the C6 tires. But. Oh, and Cargo 11's on. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. But anyway, back to the C8 and Ferrari discussion. Um, this is probably going to happen to the C8. Um, I'm, I'm going to predict that the ZR1 or maybe a different version of the C8 will have a hybrid version with front mounted electric motors. So it will be four wheel drive, uh, will be mid engine. Uh, there is an additional motor in between the gas engine, um, the flywheel, uh, but there's two additional, there's three motors total, two in the front and one in be sandwiched in between the gas engine. So um, I'm, I'm pretty certain that we will see a version of that with the C8. Um, so just get ready for that. Um, I'm not saying it's going to happen right away. It may be several years into the into the C8 generation before we see that. But um, yeah, and I do have a little bit of C8 news as well. Um, there is this this article about not being able to crack the ECU. Now, every year, pretty much GM locks down the ECU, including the new ZR1, the 2019 ZR1. There was not any tuning available on it just until recently. So this is not too much of a surprise. Unique encrypted ECU system, they're saying here. Uh, it will take Almost a year, probably, before tuners could crack the code and get into it. But I guarantee you they will be able to crack the code. Um, so just right out the box, you're not going to be able to tune it. But if I were you, I wouldn't do it anyway because you will avoid the warranty. And on a brand new model with newer updated engines, you definitely want that warranty. So. Um, it's probably going to be a year, like I said, before you're going to be able to crack that code. Now, this article is um, confirming uh, the LT2V8, uh, but for some reason they're calling it door overhead cam. It's not a door overhead cam. Oh, wait, the push rod, 6.2 liter V8, making 500 horsepower. Um, it's not door overhead cam. Uh, the Dorvard cam could come later, um, and they're they're saying it's going to have a flat plane crank, which again, not too sure about that one either. But twin turbocharged, yes, I believe that. Again, we've seen that in the Blackwing V8, and then they are saying hybrid as well. So. What do you guys think about that? I again, I I don't. This is not too much of a surprise to me, but um, you know, something to consider if you want to tune it. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to right away. Uh, okay, let's let's keep moving here. There was actually um, several new car debuts coming at the end of this month in May. Uh, I'm not sure why exactly. Um, but uh, the first one we have is actually two cars, two Cadillacs. And it's going to happen tomorrow. When I'm actually pretty excited to see these because I like fast four doors. 
Uh, it's the 2020 CT4 and CT5V. And the CT4 we haven't seen at all yet. The CT5, I had a video on it from New York. Actually, a lot of people watch that video. And uh, the V version is going to be debuted tomorrow. And now the CT4 is going to be a smaller version of the CT5, rear-wheel drive, uh, alpha platform as well, which I'm very happy about. And they're going to introduce it with the V model. So that's pretty exciting. I, I'm, I'm excited to see what kind of engines they're going to put in. Um, CT5, thinking the V8 will, will, will be in it, um, the Blackwing V8 from the CT... 6 V. Um, the CT6 V is eventually going to be going away here. So um, they're probably going to put that Blackwing V8 in this V version, which will be really cool. Now, the CT4 might be too small for that. And they may stick with the twin turbo V6 that's in the ATS V now. So the, the CT. Uh, six is making 500 horsepower, 574 pound feet of torque, and the CT6 V uh, has 550 horsepower and 627 pound feet of torque. You can get the V8 in the regular CT6 as well, not just the V. So we'll see what what ends up going in the CT5. Uh, they're they're also predicting the 3.6 V6 and the CT4 V. So Anyway, again, I'm excited to see these cars. Uh, they're also supposed to be cheaper than the last Vs. So that's exciting news. Um, when does anything get cheaper? But I can I can understand that with the uh, sedans not selling very well in the U.S. anymore and the manufacturers getting away from that. Now, these have been developed for years so uh, ahead of time, so that's why they're they have to introduce them um, as previously scheduled. Uh, but I'm sure if they knew the market the way they were going to be, they probably wouldn't have both the CT4 and CT5 debuting. Uh, Applejack says, the C8 seems to look like that new Ferrari, right? I agree. Yeah, all these mid-engine cars are going to be look, looking pretty similar now. Corvette is definitely getting into the Euro and supercar type styling. I like it. Yeah, um, we'll see what the final product reveals. And, and we're almost a month away, or, well, we're a little over a month away from actually seeing the C8, which is pretty pretty damn exciting. So uh, still no invitation in the mail, unfortunately. <laughs> but let me know if any of you guys uh, got it. And... Um, uh, I yeah I don't know of any um, YouTubers that have gotten an invitation at least that I've heard of so far. So uh, another introduction today um, from Chevy actually revealed the all new Trailblazer. They brought back this name. Well, you know they brought back the the Blazer name. Uh, earlier this year, and now there's a Trailblazer, which is, you know, the th towards the end of the Blazer's life, the previous Blazer's life, they called it the Trailblazer. So now this Trailblazer is going to be a smaller version of the Blazer, and it's going to slot in between the Equinox and track size, which how many SUVs do they need now? So there's going to be the Trax, this Trailblazer, Equinox, the regular Blazer, and then they have the um, um, the bigger ones too, like the uh, uh, it's, the name's escaping me right now. The um, well, of course, the Tahoe and Suburban, and then the Traverse. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This will be the seventh SUV model. So I don't know. Um, are they trying to be 
like Ford and, and get rid of all the sedans, push all the sedans out. I think the Impala is going to be uh, ending its life here soon. And um, that leaves the Malibu. The cruise already is done. Um, actually, let me see what they're showing on their their website. They're, they're still showing that Sonic, which, I mean, can't be... <laughs> can't be long for its life and then the spark uh cruise like i said is ended production malibu they'll probably keep i guess i haven't heard them killing it off they should keep they probably should keep the malibu though should keep at least one but yeah sedans are going going bye-byes real quick um Applejack says, asks, would, it, would you have tracked your Mustang if you would have had it long enough? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It, it had the performance package. Um, it was a manual. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would have definitely tracked it. Um, I would track any sports car. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so anything I get, I would, I would definitely track. Um, Yep. Then he also says, I've seen the new GMC Acadia the other day. I couldn't believe how small it was. It was like half the size of what they were in 08, etc. Yeah. So what they did with the Acadia is they made it on a shorter wheelbase, which was a shocker. Uh, because, yeah, the previous one was a long wheelbase. And Chevy has the Traverse, which is the long wheelbase. So certain models got the long wheelbase, and certain models got the short wheelbase. Um, I guess they wanted just to differentiate it and compete with, you know, Honda Pilot and Passport and all them. Um, but Cadillac now even has a version of it. That's the long wheelbase, the XT6. Buick, I think, has the long wheelbase. That's the um, Encore, Enclave. I get them confused now. And then the um, Chevy, of course, has the long wheelbase. So, so yeah, they wanted to differentiate a little bit with that. But uh, they're supposed to be a redesigned or refreshed version of the Acadia coming out this fall. So... And Applejack says, personally, I think GM is going to get too many models and will suffer from it. Too many choices, too many models competing for the same market. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why they're doing this. Um, I don't know if some of these are made in China as well. Like the Buick has the one model that's made in China. And I get confused with all the names. Encore or... Um, I think that's the one that's made in China, but it is strange. Um, I rather them do less models well than flood the market with all these in between sizes and and not not doing a good job um, designing them because that's a lot. The more models you have, the more to maintain, and you know that takes resources. So again, less models more money to focus on them and do them well. And Applejack says, yes, quality over quantity. So uh, the last story I have is another strange one. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of this. Fiat Chrysler's proposing a merger with Renault to make the world's third largest global automaker. Why? Why would they do this? Fiat Chrysler is just doing well now, uh, mainly because of Jeep, because of Ram trucks. And why would they want to merge with a failing automaker? I mean, Renault is not doing well at all. Nissan, they were tied up with Nissan. Well, they are tied up with Nissan. Nissan's not doing well. Mitsubishi's not doing well. Uh, I don't. I don't understand it. I, I really don't understand it. And I hope. 
I hope it doesn't go through. Um, and also diluting the whole American brand uh, Jeep. I mean, it's already tied up with Fiat, which is Italian company, but um, I really don't want it to be diluted further with a French company. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't get it at all. Again, I hope it's just exploring and not going to happen. But um, I don't want to see that happen. So what do you guys think of that? Uh, pretty crazy, if you ask me. Um, but anyway, guys, our half hour is up. I'm going to leave it there. If you are watching this back, definitely comment below your thoughts on everything we talked about tonight. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, definitely uh, stay tuned for Saturday's upload. will be another good one, uh, interesting one in uh, on Corvette C7s. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.